about bird houses for real birds and not some uh, floozy bird. That's nice, but you wouldn't want to put that in your yard, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to talk about some guidelines here and uh, you should realize first of all not all birds uh, use birdhouses in fact uh, some like robins and uh, uh, thrushes and uh, cardinals uh, just build a nest and they wouldn't go in a birdhouse but things like uh, uh, you know the uh, chickadees and the nut hatches and uh, uh, bluebirds and birds of that nature actually use uh, what's called a cavity. Uh, to them, a birdhouse that's all it is is a cavity in a tree. In fact, there's a whole list here. I won't. Uh, that's not in your handout. I won't bother to. Uh, uh, I can pass this around so you can look at them. Some of them are rather large birds, like owls and. Uh, of American cholesterol or and things of that nature and you have to make bigger houses for them. Uh, by the way, thank Bill for bringing this in. I do have a copy of this. Uh, very nice and in fact you have a uh, chart on the back of that handout that has sizes for various kinds of birds and that did come out of uh, out of here. So, Just go ahead and pass this around. But you can get all kinds of books on birdhouse construction or uh, even, uh, and that's a simple one, what was this, 250, I believe, uh, or bird feeders. We're not going to talk about feeders today, but same thing, this one was like 295, you know, for bird feeders. So they were old cheapos, but uh, we can pass those around too. A lot of people uh, that make birdhouses as yard art, that's not really what I'm here for, okay? Uh, you can tell I'm sort of a fanatic, you know, about birdhouses. So I got all kinds of plans there, but keep it simple is the basics because birds don't care. They don't care if it's painted. In fact, they actually prefer that that birdhouse blend with the background. They don't like it to stand out because of predators. Okay, or attracted. I don't think that's going to work. Can't Well, I can't get it to change. Yeah. I'll change it then. Yeah. The bottom line is size and location. You build different size houses for different birds. Something like this might be appropriate for that uh, nut nut hatch or chickadee. But the key here is the size of the hole. If you get the hole too large, uh, larger birds will go in there and will run off the little ones. All right. So you want to size that hole for the bird you're trying to attract. What size is a squirrel like? <laughs> I'll show you an example. Yeah. So you want to also the uh, base size here is a function of the size of the bird that's going to occupy the house. The minimum is like four by four and goes up to there and an owl house would be quite large, you know, but... Uh, they don't require a, a roost on there for them to land on, they just dive, dive in? Or? Actually, you're not even supposed to put a roof, roost on a birdhouse. It's because predators can use that to get into the birdhouse, like a snake or squirrels, and the birds don't need to roost. You know. They're going to see their side of the house with the knots come out. Yeah. And they, they, I mean, they go right in there. I mean, they yeah. the edge and walk right in. Even something like this, you'll see the bird fly up there and he'll land. He'll actually be clinging to the side of the house, so he really doesn't need the, the roost, you know. Choose the correct location for each species. You know, like bluebirds like edges of open fields. They don't like to be in the trees. Uh, if you're uh, trying to detect uh, woodpeckers, they like their houses on tree trunks, but they like to be 30 feet off the ground. You know, they don't like to be close to the ground. In fact, none of these work on the ground. This one's been sitting out on my uh, bench for some time, and the bird hadn't occupied it. I had a couple others I was going to bring. 
I opened them up and they uh, had nests in them. <laughs> so I closed them back up and left them there, you know. You had a comment? Yeah, is this species list on the last page by any chance uh, filtered for this area or is it just... No, large? no, it's not. It's generic. Well, a bird actually going, I saw one in a magazine that had a glass back in it and it was mounted outside of the house so you could see the bird. Will they actually use that? They would, George, but it'd have to be in an area where there's not a lot of motion in the background, you know? Like if it were on your kitchen window and people are walking by there all the time, it'd probably disturb them. Yeah. But if it were like on a side window of a dining room where people aren't go walking by there constantly, you know, and maybe walk over there and look at it occasionally, that'd probably work all right. Uh, <clears throat> next. Materials of construction use wood for good heat insulation. Uh, I have one that I didn't bring with me. It's a, uh, I meant to bring it. It's a, made out of uh, sheet metal. You don't really want to do that. It's round and it's got a round roof, but uh, unless you like barbecued baby birds, all right, because the heat will kill them, especially around here in the summertime. So you want to use wood. Pine, cedar, redwood, cypress, uh, are about the best, okay? And generally speaking, in order of expensiveness, it'd be pine is the least expensive, cypress maybe next, cedar next, and redwood next. You want to comment about pressure treated? Uh, yeah, do not use pressure treated pine because uh, it off gases chemicals. And there's some debate about it, but uh, most people think it would harm the birds. Okay, so stay away from it. Besides which, this one's uh, cedar, and you can see it's been around for quite some time. You know, cedar works pretty well, but this is a one by six board, and I've got one a single birdhouse laid out on it. That board, I bought two boards for the price of one cedar board. Two pine boards for the price of one cedar board at the at Lowe's, by the way. You can get it cheaper than that, but anyway. Uh, if it's a pine house, you want to use three or four penny galvanized nails. And I've used finished nails before, but they aren't always the best. This one has finished nails in it, and none of them pull through. But if the sides of the house start to warp and whatnot, sometimes with a finished nail, they'll pull it through. So I've started using common nails, you know, with the big head on them. And particularly if you're going to be building these with a kid, those uh, common nails are easier for a child to drive than a finished nail is. They're less likely to bend them. They're a little bit stouter, and they're easier to hit the head, you know. Uh, for cedar, redwood, and cypress, uh, galvanized nails don't work too well, but uh, you can use them, uh, but they will stain, particularly cedar. Uh, you'll see stains going down the side. Uh, you might want to use a uh, rust-resistant screw instead. I don't know if I've got any here with screws in them, but I might have. Let's see the next one. Required features. The side should enclose the floor to keep the rain out. In other words, you don't want the floor sticking out beyond the edges of the house. All right, because the rain could conceivably collect and go in to the house. The roof should overlap the uh, front as a minimum. Now, uh, this one violates that rule. The roof does not extend past the sides, okay, and uh, this was one of the early ones I made. I could fix that by putting another board over here, but it should actually be wider than the sides. It's not so important that it overlapped the back as much as if the back sealed off from the rain, you know. In fact, there was a gap here, so I put added this little trim piece just to cover the gap so the rain doesn't run down the back and into the house. Put drainage holes in the floor or chamfer the corners. In this case, I just knocked off the corners at a 45 before I put the bottom in there, and that's for drainage, okay? So if water does get in there, then it'll drain out the bottom. The front roof overhang should be at least two inches. I don't know if that's two inches or not, but it's close. Okay. Required features, make sure that the side, uh, side or top will open for easy cleaning. Again, this when the front pivots. 
another feature that I forgot to mention on my slides here. I don't know if you can notice, but the inside of this is scored. You want a rough interior. And if you don't have a smooth board, you want to put uh, mark it up or something. That's so the little birds can climb out of the house easily. On a slick surface, they have some trouble doing that, you know. And but that, that's the reason that one scored, even though it's fairly rough on the inside anyway. You know? For bats too. Yeah, bats like that. Yeah. If we have time, we can talk about that. It could just be holes drilled in the bottom. In fact, this is uh, one I cut out yesterday and I just drilled holes in the bottom. That's the bottom there. Talk about that in a minute. Do not place a perch or a floor sticking out the front. And that's because of predators, squirrels, snakes, uh, and some others like baby birds. And you're giving them easy access to the birdhouse is what you're doing, okay? And the birds don't need the perch. Uh, I think that might be the last slide there. No, oh, decorating. People like to decorate birdhouses. If you're going to do that, that's fine. Just realize that the bird doesn't need it, okay? And you really want to use water-based paints. You don't want anything with a volatile chemical in it. Although if it's cured long enough, it'd be okay. If you painted it with an oil-based paint and then let it sit around for six months before you actually put it up, that might be okay. Uh, they actually like it done, the birds themselves like muted colors. They don't like bright colors. They don't like uh, Sea Rock City. <laughs> that white and red, they actually, like I said, they prefer that the house blend with the background. And again, that's for uh, avoiding predators. They'd rather not have their nest standing out, you know. Do not paint, stain, or apply a preservative to the inside of the house. Just leave it natural wood. Okay, is that the last one? No, mounting. Now, most birdhouses need to be mounted firmly to a post, a building, or a tree at the correct height. Most birds don't like their houses moving around. All right. There are exceptions. Nuthatches and chickadees don't care. You can uh, actually hang that from a branch, and they don't care that the thing sways in the wind. You know. Uh, Space birdhouses at least 20 feet apart, and that's because of uh, competition reasons. You know, they don't like to be that close. There are exceptions like purple martins. All right, uh, but bluebirds especially, uh, you need to use a space in about 100 feet because they're actually very competitive, you know, uh, with each other. Is that the last one there? Yeah. Now, this is just one style. There are all kinds of styles of birdhouses. And you can use all kinds of roofing options. I know Will, who's not here today, uses copper. Uh, this is a different style, and also it opens differently. It opens from the side. So it really, it's just got two nails as pivots up here at the top, and then it's got a screw to close the side. That's for cleaning out. Both of our, all of these should open so you can clean them out at the end of the year. And you want to do that because it'll be filled with parasites, not just nesting nesting materials, but you'll find all kinds of bugs in there. You know? Yeah, Bill. Say on the bluebirds, you ought to clean it after each uh, each family moves out because you'll get two or three bluebird families in a summertime. So you really should pay attention to a bluebird, and it's when they're uh, nestling fledged, then you should go clean that out. Okay. And again, I don't know if you notice uh, this one scored on the inside, so that uh, it's just got screws cut in it. You know. And that's a piece of asphalt shingling. You know, some leftover asphalt shingling that's on top of there. Uh, be careful about your design, and I bought this one deliberately. I haven't repaired it yet. Uh, this is actually for a woodpecker, downy woodpecker, or something like that. Is it easier to around the, the opening? Oh, yeah, I'm glad you asked about that, George. That's, again, to protect the birds. Uh, the squirrels with one thickness can reach through and grab a bird, pull them out of the nest, but if you put two thicknesses like this, then they can't get to them. And also, uh, this has a piece of copper around the edge of the opening, and why would you do that? 
Can't Squirrels like to chew on it. Woodpecker house. I left too big a gap up here for ventilation, and it was only because my board was too short. And I thought, well, that'll be okay. But here's what can happen to you. Became a squirrel house. <laughs> so I've got to fix that, but when I do, if I have an opening like this, I'll put a piece of hardware cloth over there or something, just keep the squirrel from chewing into it like that, you know. So, yeah. On the bird houses where you use two layers, do you, do you have the same size hole for both of the layers? Both, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do, okay. Yeah. And it's maybe hard to see, but because this is for a woodpecker, it's a little bigger than you would for a nuthatch or a chickadee. And it's on that list uh, handed out what the hole size should be. Yeah. Okay, these two are my nesting boxes. Yeah. The one on the left is bluebird nesting box, the one on the right is woodpecker nesting box. Right. You yeah. put the plate, I put the piece of copper pipe and sleep the hole. Yeah, you can do that. So I've done that for bluebird boxes with an inch and a half diameter. I've done that for woodpecker boxes. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed. For an owl box or catcher box, it's copper pipe too expensive. It's a piece of copper pipe. Yeah. Oops, sorry. On the inside of the hole there in that case. But you can also do this simple uh, case here. That's a piece of sheet metal, you know, with a hole in it and just holes to attach it. It will sub serve the same purpose, you know. Also, uh, woodpecker house, if you're going to do this, put uh, your wood shavings in the bottom of it don't have to put a lot but you want to put some shavings in the bottom they like uh, that mimics a hole in a tree trunk to them you know uh, not particularly but they'll live in your attic if you let them yeah they uh, don't need to be digging out their own hollows matter of fact they'll run birds out if they can uh, you could if you wanted to I particularly don't have, don't have an affinity for rats, <laughs> and especially tree rats. Yeah. I've killed thousands of them, I've eaten thousands of them in my lifetime, but I don't do that anymore. When I was a kid, I did. Uh, not all uh, birds will use a bird house, but they might use a nesting platform. Uh, robins, there's a tree swallow and some other species that uh, this works for them because they can build their nest but they build it on the platform here and the only reason for this front piece is to keep debris from being knocked out of a nest or uh, easily and that kind of stuff you know so and that, that's using the uh, galvanized uh, common nails you know uh, which is what I recommend anymore because they don't pull out as easily as the finished nails do. Do squirrels attack that house too or, or they eat that one pretty much? A squirrel will take over anything that it can. You know. Keep your BB gun around. <laughs> yeah, Sherman. Well, assemble those. Do you use uh, wood glue? No. No glue. Okay. If it comes apart, you just repair it. I don't know how old this one is. Maybe I should pass it around because you can see how uh, cedar uh, weathers real well. I wouldn't recommend this anymore. I, that's a hanging hole, but it's too close to the top and it tore out. I'm going to fix it by putting a uh, probably a washer around that to reinforce it. You know? Yeah. Careful, it's got dirt in it. <laughs> Uh, and while I'm on this topic, I have a very simple plan here, and I don't know if you can get a good view of this. Uh, one board birdhouse. In fact, uh, I know Bill works with kids, and this is ideal for a kid. This was cut out of one one by six piece of pine. And that's a complete kit for a kid. All right, and. Uh, you make it easy for them. You can actually get them to cut it, but I wouldn't recommend a circular saw. You know, maybe a maybe a uh, saw. jigsaw. No, maybe a jigsaw, uh, uh, saber saw, whatever you want to call it, might work. <laughs> I cut these on my RAS. Bad word around here. Regular arm saw. <laughs> Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. Those simple kids work real good with the adults, too. <laughs> with the adults, yeah. <laughs> there's the floor, 
okay? And I've labeled these in case I were to give this to somebody, you know, and here's the sides. And note I've drilled uh, ventilation holes at the top of the sides. And also, if you look close, I don't know if you can get a shot of this, Jim, I've pre-drilled holes where these are attached to each other so that if you gave this to a kid, he can just drop a nail in that hole and the hole's big enough the nail drops through. All right, uh, but it's small enough that it holds it in place. All right, So they, they can just stick it together like this. Now I didn't do that on that side because that's going to be the side that pivots. You know. <coughs> Here's the back. And again the back is uh, pre-drilled for nail holes. The nail holes are pre-drilled. All right. Now you can get a kid to do as much of this as you want. And this happens to be a bluebird house. It happens bluebirds like oval openings. All right. And uh, uh, that's the front. I think you can't hold all this together. And then here's the top. Yeah. In fact, uh, if you're really into bluebirds, there is, in fact, a uh, plan by uh, Peterson. That's a wedge shaped, and I've built one of those before. I don't f see that uh, bluebirds like them any better than the uh, standard rectangular house, though, you know. And it's a lot of work to cut all these angles uh, for this Peterson birdhouse. They claim that they like them better. I don't know. I gave mine away at one of the GWA picnics <laughs> one year. <laughs> so you have no problem to have a radio arm yeah, <laughs> the radio arm saw, that's right. So again, you know, that's a very simple design, and I even had a leftover piece from that 1x6. And in fact, this is that, I don't know if you can see it, this is a 1x6x6, by six by six, and it's laid out already. In fact, uh, you could do this if the kid has enough uh, uh, wherewithal to cut it out himself, you know. Because this, that's the back, that's the front, this is the hole. Now I used a Forstner bit, but you could use a bracing bit. That's a one and three eighths diameter. Don't laugh, John. <laughs> I've done that before. How many people have a brace? Bracing bit. Yeah. <laughs> How many people use it? Not much lately. a bit works pretty well, but <laughs> and I would necessarily slant the top. Like no, uh, it's better for drainage uh, when it rains, so the water doesn't collect up there, you know. Uh, side to side, and there's the, the top, and there's the bottom, and then you got about this much of that board left over. So out of two boards, I could probably get three birdhouses, actually. I don't try to lay out a third one out of the, the waste, but I could come close to getting a third one out of that. You know. Did you say that uh, slanting would be better or not? Yeah. Uh, only because of drainage, you know, uh, especially if, depending on how you cut your top. Now this is centered right through the middle of the pith. You can see the pith in there, you know. But if it's flat sawn, well, yeah, there's a flat sawn piece. What do you want, if it's flat roof, what do you want to do? You want to put it this way. Yeah. Why? Because the board will warp, it will crown that way. And it sort of uh, will still drain properly, but if you turn it over that way, it'll work this way, and it'll collect water right in the top, middle of the top. Pickle up the goat out. Yeah, the goat. Yeah. Have you seen the information where they say in order to keep a smaller bird out of a bluebird house, you put the hole in the bottom of it, in the floor? I've never seen that. In fact, uh, I saw an article on that. Yeah, if you go to these web websites where these people are always talking about, about bluebird houses, this is a, a fairly standard design, and that's at the top. You know. This is information that uh, there was an article on it that they found, and I tried it. And it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, I didn't, wouldn't think it would, but uh, feel free, free to tie anything you want. Uh, let's see, I wasn't sure how much time I had left, but uh, just real quick, I've done this before too, and this is not the best design. No holes in that. What is that? That box. That house, that's right. 
All right, and if you turn it, you'll see there's partitions in there for them to cling to. However, that's not proper design for a bat house. Yeah, it should be open at the bottom, like this, but the partitions should only be about one and a half inches apart because they like the really close spaces for heat, for retaining heat, and those are spaced too far apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, where there's an internal baffle, so that there's an opening in the front, and then your second board comes up from the bottom, and then your third is the back wall, and they'll crawl up in there. Yeah. And actually, there also should be a landing area below here. This back should stick further down so that the back can land on it and then crawl up in the house. And in truth, they don't even uh, like, I'm going to make an owl house out of this or something. They don't even like them this size. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they are a whole group. Matter of fact, the one plan I got, in fact, I gave that one away to somebody in the club. Bob Burkall, I think. You can make it out of two pieces of plywood and furring strips. That's wide enough. You put the uh, uh, plywood front, a plywood back, and a furring strip is the spacing that you need. That's exact the exact kind of spacing that you need. And the back should go down further, and then that forms that cavity for them to go up into. You do want a roof, though, because you do want uh, to protect them from the rain, and you would like because bats depend on body heat, you also typically seal it with silicon caulking, any cracks in there, you know. And it needs to be 30 feet off the ground? 30 feet off the ground on a post or something. And I think it's got to be what? They like uh, the sun. Should, it should get six to eight hours of sun a day. All right, the bat house should, and you should paint it uh, anywhere from black to a light tan, depending on how what the ambient temperature is in the summertime. Around here, you'd want a light tan or a light brown because of the temperatures in the summertime. Up north, you'd want something you want black. You'd want to paint it black. It's actually, it's south exposure. That's what yeah, southern exposure. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Any other questions yet, Bill? Oh. Uh, I'd like to explain that. Yeah, Bill actually uh, helps, uh, has a program that he helps kids build bird house, bluebird houses. Well, it's a group of us. Uh, go on the website for Unicoi and you'll see when that woodworker mentioned properly. Uh, I've been making these things for about, or a group of us have been making them for about 10 years. And our normal one looks like that. And they get, uh, I don't know what they call them, bird people anyway. Uh, they said, have you ever thought of, you know, how to combine it to make it a, a roost box? <coughs> What's a roost box? On the winter time, the birds go into, um, these are not bird houses, by the way. I can't yeah. They're being corrected. They're <laughs> nesting boxes. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the normal one looks like this that we make. But they said uh, we want to make roost boxes, and they're they've got to have the hole at the bottom. So I made a convertible one for them. <laughs> but if you do build bird houses. It would be, you know, use your imagination and come up with a way because you got to clean it in the fall anyway. Make it so you can convert it to a roost box. There's been reports of up to ten birds in a bird uh, nesting box <laughs> in the winter time. In the winter time. Would you put pegs across so they can climb up and? Huh? Would you put pegs across the interior to so no. they? Climb up and they climb on each other. They they cling. Yeah, they cling to the sides. Uh, yeah, car. This friend of mine, he put a bat house up in the top corner where his garage is, but now he has to clean out his driveway once a week. Keep a bat house away from the house. <laughs> you don't want them shitting on the side of your house. Why do you have to yeah. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's interested, this is like an eight page booklet that I got off the internet and it's basically about cutting these kits 
and uh, working with kids on building a bluebird house. And uh, it's, it's such detailed instructions, practically anybody can follow it. What's I mean, it, website or website? Uh, it got cut off the bottom, I don't remember. That's your and, no, it's not a bat house, it's a bird house. Uh, but I mean, they even get down to drilling the holes for the nails and all that kind of stuff. They go into that level of detail. So it, it's, it's a nice project for a kid, you know, if you got a kid that has had some interest in woodworking, but you know you're not going to stand there for five hours while, you know, he builds something from scratch, you can start with something like this. And whether you drill the nails for the holes or not is up to you, but if you try to drive a nail through a piece of pine like that, especially a kid, he's going to split it, you know. That's why the nail holes are pre-drilled. It's even worse than the cedar. Yeah, cedar will split too. In fact, the cedar you get at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's is only about, uh, it's not even three quarters of an inch thick. Measure it sometime. And if you plane it down, you're lucky if you got a half an inch left <laughs> on the rough side. You know, if you're going to build it out of the, one of those pieces of cedar, put the rough side on the inside, by the way, and the smooth side on the outside. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, just to mention, uh, use a hand saw and a brace and bit and you lay it out on a board like this for them. You know? Yeah, Bill. Uh, besides Lowe's and, and Home Depot, we've gone to uh, I think it's Hank Defense Company. There's one in Gainesville and there's one over near Covington and we buy the cedar fencing fence slots. Yeah. They're, they're not American cedar. I don't. I don't think the birds care if it's Chinese cedar. You can get a, a birdhouse out of a one flat, which is two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. Uh, you get about eight out of six. Yeah. Flats. I can tell you, Lowe's a one by eight by eight cedar board is thirteen fifty because I priced it yesterday. You know. I mean, how badly do you want to see the bird house, you know? <laughs> yeah, Jerry. Are you saying that rough stuff should be turned in the inside? Inside, yeah, for the birds to grip on. You know? And uh, smooth uh, should be turned to the outside if you got, because those boards are only planed on one side, and they're rough on the other side. Yeah. Are you ready, Bob? Yeah. Well, Jerry, thanks a lot.